Minecraft is not necessarily a game known for being scary. Well, at least if you don't count Bedrock Edition's predatory monetization methods. Ugh. But that doesn't mean it can't be unsettling at times. Ah, I don't know why I yell! You got your obvious answers as to why, your cave sounds, the deep dark and warden, peak music. And the reason why I believe these tactics work is through their subtlety. Minecraft is a sandbox game. It's meant to be played in any way you want it to. These more unnerving aspects of the game can generally be completely ignored if you really want to, but they are there for you to sulk in and immerse yourself in the sometimes dreary atmosphere of the overworld if you ever choose to. So just like for many other things in the game, Minecraft's potential horror or just unsettling elements are already laid out for the player to exploit if they wish. So what if we just said the hell of that and threw a lanky pale dude with a loud mp3 file? So as of late, I continue to see this trend around Minecraft continue to build around one core goal. How do we make Minecraft more scary? In this challenge, several people had started to attempt to create new creatures and entities to add into the Minecraft world. Of course, the idea of haunted entities hunting you down in your Minecraft world isn't new. If anything, it's existed in the zeitgeist since the game's infancy. But as of late, this concept has seemed to burst, with a new Night Stalker or Goat Man being created every freaking week. So I guess my question in all of this is why? Why did this suddenly become such a lucrative niche? And most importantly, why does it not no. work? Well, I can't think of anywhere more appropriate to start than with the mod I believe created this entire trend. But first, this video is sponsored by me. I have a second channel now where I've been uploading more unscripted commentary style videos adjacent to the topics I cover on here. I won't be promoting it too heavily, but if you want some background noise, this is definitely the channel for you. I'll leave a link in the pinned comments and the description if you want to check it out. So be sure to if you're curious. All right, anyways. <laughs> As stated previously, Minecraft certainly does have unsettling attributes to its world and environment, but most commonly agreed to be the most off-putting and startling are the cave noises. If you've played Minecraft for even a semblance of time, it's not unlikely you have stumbled into one of these sounds in your hours of playing the game. But a good question about these ambient tracks is why are they here exactly? They don't seem to have a source usually, and typically exist just as a way to startle the player while they are immersing themselves in their Minecraft world. But what if there was a source to these noises? That was a question asked by fellow content creator Garjan, and he went on to create what he believes could be the source for these unsettling noises, naming the creature Cave Dweller. He got to work modeling and coding a new entity into the game with the purpose of giving new meaning to those unsettling sounds. Now, the Cave Dweller on the surface sounds advanced, but he is pretty simple. The intricacies on how he works are more properly laid out in Garjan's original video, and I'll have a link to that for you to check out after this. In that video, he explains how the Cave Dweller works on three separate engines, and will stalk the player and go aggro on the player when spotted with direct sight. On the surface, this sounds like a very striking and imposing force on your Minecraft world. Like, imagine if you had a young relative over and he asked to play Minecraft, which in turn you agree to, and while they go into a cave looking for diamonds, they see this. I'd say they'd probably be scared, but in all honesty, they're likely to forget about it immediately after they find out Skibbity Toilet Part 96 came out or something. I don't fucking know. So the only way I believe I'd be able to judge the impactfulness of this mod was to play it myself. No extra additions added to the game, just me, Vanilla Minecraft, and the Cave Dweller. <laughs> Loading in, I spawned into a tundra biome and wandered around for a little bit. I did all the basics, harvesting trees, craft a wood pickaxe, even found an igloo, which was pretty interesting. After taking its bed and furnace, I quickly took the loot out of this ruined portal, then ventured further north where I found a plains biome. This was good, as it allowed me to stock up on more materials and get stone tools, as well as harvest some animals before I decided to make my descent into the caves. After meandering around and stumbling across 
across entrances that look like caves but only lead to dead ends. Like, seriously, is anyone else annoyed by the generation change introduced by the cave update? Anyways, I eventually did find a promising cave and I descended down. Things were pretty okay to start. I was just doing the usual Minecraft things like collecting iron or fighting creepers. But while mining iron, I heard a sound I wasn't so privy to. Now, if you've played Minecraft for a very long time, you've probably memorized all the cave noises. There's not many of them, and if you're seasoned in the game, you've likely grown used to them. But this sound, this is something I have never heard before. And honestly, it was kind of unsettling. I had no prior knowledge of the Cave Dweller other than the development video prior to playing with it. So I was under the impression that the noises it would make would have just been one out of the 19 cave sounds found in base Minecraft. So hearing this when exploring the cave really caught me off guard. I felt paranoid for the remainder of the time I was exploring the cave. More sounds that I did not recognize from vanilla Minecraft kept echoing through the crevices. Under all the pressure, I ended up stumbling across the mineshaft, and with all the reluctance in the world in my body, I ultimately decided to step foot in. Things felt like they were getting more relaxed at this point. I even started mapping out a little shelter in the walls for me to retreat to if I needed. But while in the process of doing that, I heard a very strange sound. One that almost sounded like footsteps. Before I could process anything more of what was going on, this happened. Now, admittedly, I made some mistakes here. The Cave Dweller is meant to trigger your fight or flight response, but it is really hoping you choose flight to get the most out of its AI. The mob even has the chance to despawn mid chase or even run away from you if certain ticks are triggered. That being said, I believe the payoff of the Cave Dweller itself is without a question the weakest part of the mob's presence. Its goofy model heavily contrasting with the rest of the Minecraft world around it, along with its cartoon run animations made the payoff feel more like a FNAF security breach jump scare than a PT set piece. But understandably, I don't expect that from a Minecraft mod. This was a little experiment made by just one guy to see if you could bring an extra layer of terror into the core Minecraft formula. And if that was their intention, I believe they did a lot better than I believe what many people could achieve in Minecraft. The suspense of hearing an alien noise in one of the most vulnerable settings found in the game, for them to only get louder and more abundant, to then hearing sounds of footsteps of a being you don't recognize slowly get closer to you, is something really effective for a game like Minecraft, and genuinely made me feel my own heart rate at moments. This is what I see as the inherent fear the Cave Dweller brings you. The fear of the unknown, the idea of something greater than even the Minecraft world itself, could be standing right behind you. And although I believe the payoff isn't the best executed, the foundations of making a truly great Minecraft horror mod were there. And, as such, more people sought to capitalize on that. Despite this being people's introduction, and usually their drop-off point for the Cave Dweller, if you actually went to go play this mod yourself, this version is likely not the version of the entity you are used to seeing. Despite having an outrageous 4 million views, the downloads for the original version of the Cave Dweller only sit at around 100,000, while another Cave Dweller mod sits at almost triple that. I wasn't the only one who thought the offerings of the Cave Dweller weren't reaching their full potential, and that's when I stumbled across a video titled What the Cave Dweller Could Have Been. In the short video, the creator compiles three different mods to create a more imposing threat that is said to capture
captured the same fear and tenseness as encountering the cave dweller for the very first time. They even took the liberty of uploading the compilation as its own mod. So, without further ado, let's see if these improvements help make the cave dweller more intimidating. I even added a bleak shader this time around for more effect. Spooky. Loading in, our spawn is very generous, with us being located right in the middle of a plains. It wasn't hard to locate stone, wood, and food needed before entering the depths of the caves. And it didn't take long for me to find a cave either, stumbling upon a ravine almost immediately. Something that certainly does add to the fear factor of the shader pack I'm using, but also definitely brings a set of its own problems, is the immense fog down here. So, making torches was a necessity. For the first two minutes of being in the cave, I heard nothing. No cave dweller, no hostile mobs, barely anything but the sounds of my own footsteps. I had to check if I was playing on peaceful for a minute because the silence was that eerie. Though eventually I did hear the groan of a zombie in the distance, so that strangely put some of my worries to rest. I ended up stumbling across another abandoned mineshaft and actually got to building my base this time around. It was also around this time that I started hearing strange noises, but not near nearly as frequently as before. It was actually kind of a challenge to find the cave dweller this time around. I don't know if this remake turned down his spawn rate, but I was running around this cave for a while trying to look for the guy. Eventually though, I started to hear footsteps, and my fight or flight started to activate. This time, trying to run away, but I got freaking caught by the webs in my attempt to get back to the base. The cave dweller has bested me again. I searched around for a little longer, waiting for it to respawn, but this time, I wanted to actually take the thing on. Aggroing it, and then running back to this little base I built, I had to hatch a plan. Hitting it through the door wasn't gonna work, it would just kill me again like last time. The cave dweller has the ability to climb through tight spaces in order to get you, so I used that to my advantage. Locking it in my base, I took one block out of my wall, and as it started to crawl towards me, I doused it in lava, getting my awaited revenge on the thing. <sighs> So, did this remaster make the Cave Dweller any better? Honestly, I thought it did it a little worse. The Cave Dweller being less likely to spawn makes the occasion feel a little more special, but there was something about heading into the first cave I found in the last world and immediately being met with alien sounds I had no prior knowledge of. Even expecting that I would encounter it at one point, I still wasn't fully prepared for what may have been waiting for me. With this, although the sounds taking longer to play made the occasion feel a lot more sudden and unnerving. Once you know what you're up against, just a new coat of paint isn't going to captivate the same level of paranoia I had when I initially came into contact with the cave dweller. And this problem is only going to get more severe as we continue. So, look at this. Anything eye-catching about this screenshot? Anything at all? Yeah, if it isn't obvious by now, the Cave Dweller got immensely freaking popular, like absurdly huge. And I can't lie, the original concept of the Cave Dweller definitely deserved it. Guardian is pretty good at coding quick and simple monsters into games that somewhat evolve on the initial concept. He did it for Gmod during the whole Nextbot craze, and he was able to do it here again. But unlike Nextbots, the Cave Dweller kind of took a mind of its own and it wasn't long until we started seeing copycats. More Cave Dweller tweaks, the man from the fog, the midnight lurker, the one who watches, the starved stalker, the corpse stalker, the demonic watcher. You get the damn point. Any two unsettling adjectives you can start with the word the essentially turned into one of these mods. This trend got so big that it revived one of the oldest Minecraft horror mods, the John mod. Do you remember Remember the John mod? Jesus Christ, that took me back. So I guess the only rational thing to do now is find every single one of these dweller-like mods I can find, put them all into one little mod pack, and see if I can not only survive, but also get spooked the same way I did when I first encountered the cave dweller. Loading in, we- uh 
Oh, oh, okay. So which other mod is causing this waste no time introducing itself to you? You're not only met with extremely loud whispering right away, but also a loud noise of a PNG attacking your screen. It's not even been a whole minute. I think the mod that's doing this is the one who watches, which in concept has a pretty cool looking monster, but doesn't really capitalize on it and rather throws everything it has at you way too early. We hear the whispering of this thing for the first good 10 minutes of it being in your world, which doesn't build any suspense and feels like it serves more as YouTuber reaction bait. Eventually, the whispers did stop, and I focused on gathering resources to build up some sort of shelter. Nighttime was fast approaching, which I figured was not great, especially given how dark the nights are with the shader on. Another thing to point out is that it is constantly thundering. Like, throughout my entire time playing this mod pack, I heard and witnessed over 10 lightning strikes per minute minimum. At first, I honestly thought it was kind of cool and a bit eerie, especially since the lightning sound had the chance of being something different. But after a while, it kind of became a nuisance. Forests around me would start burning down, leaving a bunch of ugly floating blocks in my world. It was a miracle that my house didn't catch on fire. Speaking of which, it was getting dark, and I desperately needed shelter. I was hastily building the foundations to my house and built a makeshift roof and floor. And good thing I did when I did, because this happened while I was digging out the floor. This is honestly really funny to me because I was completely ignoring the sounds this was making prior to this entity showing up. So it spawning completely out of nowhere almost felt like it got insecure and needed to do something to spook me. After enough waiting, he just exploded and I needed to go outside to put out his fire. The lightning at the end makes me almost believe that he may be the one causing the abundance of lightning strikes throughout the day, but I'm not sure. I'm sorry, but I am not the biggest fan of this guy. I think his noises can be creepy in the right context, but it doesn't try to be subtle at all. And I don't like the fact that he seems unavoidable unlike the cave dweller. I think a big part of what made the initial mob more creepy is that it could be completely avoidable if you just ignore it, but its presence will always work to put you more on edge when near. This one, the man from the fog I believe, is cool in concept, attempting to be an above ground cave dweller, but loses a lot of the charm the initial cave dweller had in the beginning. I believe he needs to be much more subtle in order to be an effective threat, as the constant alerting of his presence and inevitable attack when you don't even get to interact with him are not that scary and become very formulaic and predictable as time goes on. I also encountered the starved stalker for the first time on my second night. He's certainly the easiest one to deal with out of all the ones I went up against, literally just showing up outside of my window and then leaving, but he did have have kind of a surprisingly banker theme, which was not expected. I think this guy is more cool than scary. The night was not through with me yet though, as the one who watches just popped up outside of my window, to which I gave no reaction to. I think this made him kind of sad, because he just ran away and I hadn't seen him again throughout my next hour of playing. But the night still wasn't through with me, as the man from the fog spotted me again, this time actually breaking one of my windows and making his way inside my base. He killed me and flashed a spooky PNG over my head, so that was fun. At this point, I was getting kind of tired of the same predictable things happening to me on the overworld. So after finally finishing my house that looks like it just crawled out of 2012, I gathered up some resources and decided to descend to potentially meet an old friend. After gearing up a bit more, I stumbled across an abandoned mineshaft, heard some familiar noises, and eventually came face face to face of it once more. This time, I just killed it off pretty easily. Yeah, something they don't really tell you about the Cave Dweller is that he's really only an imposing threat early game. Even very early game gear like full iron is enough to take it down if you play your cards right, making this creature not feel nearly as imposing once you've done some basic progression throughout the game. I understand the purpose of the Cave Dweller is meant to be a balanced threat, but it honestly would be cool if his stats change depending on if you've done certain 
achievements throughout the game. Maybe once you've collected diamonds or headed to the nether for the first time, it triggers a tick that increases the strength and health of it or something like that. Just anything to make the creatures still feel threatening no matter what stage of the game you're at. Anyways, I headed back up to my base and did something I should have done a long while ago. I went to sleep, like I think I damn earned it. In conclusion, it's hard to make Minecraft scary. Throwing a bunch of entities at the wall and seeing what sticks is not what I believe to be the thing most mod developers should be doing in an attempt to make this game more frightening. The most unsettling part about any of these mods were just the audio files that would play before encountering any sort of beast or creature, much like the cave noises already present in the game. Funny how that works. I think if you're a developer out there looking to make the next Dweller mod, I'd highly suggest toying with the subtlety a bit more. Build up the introduction to your creature, instead of throwing everything at you at once so the YouTuber making a 100 days video on your mod can scream 72 times. Maybe take some notes from old Herobrine legends, add little details that gradually happen in your world to indicate to the player that something's wrong. Play unfamiliar audio cues every once in a while to catch the player off guard, just like the base game does. Maybe even be a bit deceitful about the features of your mod on the page to not spoil the surprise if you have to. Just something that's a bit more creative than doing what has already been done countless of times before you. I think Minecraft does have the potential to create some pretty spooky scenarios, but one of the only times I was genuinely startled while playing with any of these mods was when a creeper fell on me in a cave. I think these types of entities can work for this game and genuinely be scary, but we just need to iron out everything a bit more. Maybe then we can make something as spooky as Bedrock Edition. Before I sign off, I want to give a big thank you and I guess a shout out to Friend A's video that inspired this one. It's mostly a gameplay montage, but the core topic and idea is what inspired me to make this. I'll leave a link down to it below if you want to check it out. I honestly think it makes a pretty good complimentary piece to this one. But for now, that is all I have to say about this subject. So, I have been Dags, and until next time... See ya.